Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the Avatar Rewatch. This is a very special episode because she's here! Finally! the girl, Our favorite girl is here. So, Jared, what were your initial thoughts of this episode? I liked it. I thought it was pretty funny. I thought it was pretty cool. I liked how, how they basically recreate a sporting event, like, uh, atmosphere with, like, even Sokka, like, going, Don't talk! Fight! I was yes. like, yeah, that that was that was really cool. I enjoyed that. As far as my opinion on Toph, I both like her and find her annoying. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, explain, brother. It probably is that I have to get more of her backstory. But starting her off as this as this type of badass, it's probably because I'm I'm entering this fandom so late that I that I just see her. She's kind of borderline on a Mary Sue because she can do all this stuff despite being blind and I'm like I have to learn more about her because so far we don't really know that much so my opinion could change it's just yeah she's kind of the avatar version of Daredevil because instead of like the, the radar scent she's got like the sonar scent you know like seismic sense and whatnot mm-hmm. so kind of think of her like Daredevil in a sense in a way yeah but the episode the episode itself didn't tell me that yeah, they did. They talked it, about her seeing things with her feet. Okay, maybe I missed that. Yeah, literally. Did you see like when she like put her foot in the ground? He saw like go black and white. He saw like the waves. Yeah, but I mean, okay, it's just I, also I like that, that scene after the dinner. They're talking about how she can kind of see with her feet. Okay, I guess they didn't go right out and call it seismic sense. They will later, but uh, that's they 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 did that. Well, it just could be because I'm coming after this after seeing so many movies where there's this one female who starts off as a badass. So I'm like, okay. Yep. Also, uh, I want to give a shout out to some of the uh, voice actors. All right. So we're doing the Blind Bandit episode, by the way. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. sorry. My enthusiasm. You got that down below. So I want to give a shout out to some of the voice actors. So Toff's father is voiced by Cam Clark, who is a pretty like well-known voice actor. He's done a lot of stuff. Uh, you might know him as, like, Naked Snake from Nail Gear Solid. Uh, he did the uh, Blood Elf voice in World of Warcraft. I guarantee you, Jared, you've heard his voice before. Let me look up, up the dude's name. Cam Clark. And then, um, so basically the, the whole thing in this episode is... By the way, this is a zuku episode, by the way. So we won't eat, we won't It's really... Out. It's interesting there. I noticed that. So um, they're in the Earth... He's Aang is looking for an earthbending teacher. Sokka gets a new bag, which nice, nice. That would you know, nice on him. And so they hear hear about Earth Rumble Six, which is basically the Avatar version of WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they they play on all the wrestling stereotypes. You know, they got like the evil foreign person. You know, because like wrestling back in the day did that all the time. Like the characters like the Iron Sheik and whatnot. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they have like the best wrestling parody ever. They have the Boulder, who okay, I, there's layers to this. Okay, so he looks like Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Which, by the way, if they do not have Dwayne Johnson play the Boulder in the live action show, I will be mad. And okay. I think it's kind of funny how they made him talk like the Hulk. Actually, no, they actually had him talk like Randy Savage. Really, the Boulder. Is is angry that you have confused the wrestlers? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, because because uh, uh, yeah, because he, he, is and but also uh, the voice actor for the Boulder is a wrestler. It's Mick Foley. Wow. So, like I said, it's got layers. It's a wrestling parody. It's The Rock talking like Macho Man Randy Savage, voiced by Mick Foley, who. 
you know, like man, like he was a wrestler back in like the nineties, like you know, and whatnot. Um, but like, it is so great. I, I love it. I love it. And just like they play the wrestling angle. Um, and yeah, tough. Uh, so fun fact: originally they wanted um, the Earthbending character to be like, like kind of like the Boulder. Mm-hmm. Like the Boulder is actually. Um, a, a uh, like like the the earth bending person you see in the sh- in the, the intro, that's actually supposed to be the boulder. Mm-hmm. Like that was actually kind of supposed to be Toss' original design a little bit, but but they actually changed it to be a little girl because I actually thought it would be interesting. And honestly, in the Avatar verse, I think it worked. I think it's fine because mm-hmm. like er- bending is not really dependent on your muscles, so there's. No reason why, like, you can't have, like, an earth-bending badass be a l- little girl, you know? <laughs> like, Okay, you know what? And now I think about it, when you tell me to think of it like Daredevil, it actually works. Because isn't it like, because he's blind, his other s- senses become, like, supercharged? So it could be j- because she's blind that somehow enhances her bending and her skills. So I'm like, okay, I, I guess I-, I can buy that. Yeah, because... Uh... Because one thing that I've noticed, uh, I was actually rewatching this episode. She actually kind of moves like a waterbender, like yeah, the whole yeah. like re- like she kind of like redirections, you know, mm-hmm. the kind of circles. Um, obviously, with her bending styles, a little bit more patient versus like uh, the regular earth bending styles, more like head on charging. She's more like just stand there, wait for it, and face it. Which she still pl- does like an earth bender, but it's it's more of a more of a I guess patient kind of style, mm-hmm. which because of her her disability, you know, a lot makes a lot of sense. Like if you notice, there's a lot of shots of her like listening. You know, like the reason she calls him Twinkle Toes is because he's so light on his feet; it's hard for her to keep track of him. Which actually, that was genius move on Aang's part because he it recognized he, he basically pulled a Batman on on us. He instantly recognized. Okay, so that's how how she sees uh, she sees the world. Okay, now here's the advantage of being an Airbender: I can be very light on my feet. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, so that becomes uh, uh, Z- uh, I would just go through the whole list. Um, <laughs> that becomes Toph's nickname for Aang, literally throughout. In fact, uh, when when, uh, when we see her pop up again in Legend of Korra, she still is, she she calls Korra Twinkle Toes because you know the reincarnation thing. <laughs> uh, so it's just really nice. Um, yeah, and Toph's a Toph's a fan favorite. <laughs> Jared, I know this is your first meeting, but can you can see can you see why she's a fan favorite? Oh yeah, I can definitely see it, and maybe I'll I'll, I'll grow onto her as the series goes on because uh, at this point she's uh, she's w- with the team, right? Yeah, and mm-hmm. um, but yeah, basically, yeah, like she's a really great character. Like basically, kind of her arc going forward is like learning to trust other people, let mm-hmm. people in, and whatnot. Um. You know, she's she doesn't have like too big of an arc. Like you m- learn more about her. Like you learn her origin, and you see a lot of her fame. Like she's been very been held back. I like the emotional turning point where like she doesn't want to help Aang, but like my daughter is blind, fragile, and she cannot help you. And like that was her mental breaking point. And like I love it. And um, yeah, uh, my favorite moment is probably towards the end of this season. Um. I, I don't want to spoil it, but it's 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 great. Um, it's it, she, let's just say she brings a whole new element to the bending her bending. Yeah, that, 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 that's cool. I, I'm interested in that. that. That was very cool. She's a she's a character that has potential. I'll, I'll admit that. I'll admit that. It's just it's just yeah. And to to be clear, I still like the episode. Still give it a high mark, probably eight point five and uh, to to nine out of ten. I still give it a high mark on that. And you don't necessarily hate the character. No, I do not hate the character. It's just as it applies now, I'm kind of indifferent. I just have to wait and and see for more. I'll keep you apprised. This will be a running thing on the show. I'll keep you apprised, also, in my opinion, at all. Also, this 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 uh, this uh, this episode has like a very very well used clip of like Katara walking out and then Sokka going. I love that. That's great. I also love where they try to, where like, they meet those two dudes and and they go, okay, so t- tell us wh- wh- where the tournament is, is, and they're like, yeah, we're not gonna tell you. They walk away, and then and then uh, Katara's got, I got this. She goes, well, what are you gonna do? 
Old girl has her way. She just freezes them and makes them tell her where, where the tournament is. I guess you could say she was an ice cold bee. All right, everyone. Chill. All right, where can I remove him? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't because I have the power in this stream. I don't have the that clip on your page, so I'm not going to do that. But, uh, but yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. I, I see why you were hyping this up. Yes, like literally, um, literally the the uh, the the profile picture is just gonna be her holding the belt, and the tag guy is gonna say, "She's here." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so what would you give this episode? How would you rate? It? I, I told you, eight point five to nine out of ten. It's still enjoyable. I enjoyed tough. Let me be clear on this. I enjoyed the character a lot. I need to learn more about her from because I'm I I because with me. I don't just automatically uh, like fall in love with a character unless it's voiced by Jennifer Hale or it, it Zula takes, or Zula. Yeah, it it takes a while for me to like grab onto a character. The potential's there, so let me be. I think let, Zula let me, shocked you with how good of a character she was. Is she the one that 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 said drinks are on me? No, that's June. I'm talking about Azula, uh, Zuko's sister. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, uh, I don't think you got the pun. No, I didn't. Do you want to explain it? Azula, lightning bending. Okay, whatever. But uh, <laughs> I still didn't get it, but okay. All righty then. So for me, I would give this a 9.0. Really great episode. Uh, I can't wait for to see more. And uh, yeah, so, um, you know, Toph's here. So it'll add a whole new dynamic. And uh, we'll get some good conflict here going forward and whatnot. And uh, we'll start to see some uh, some good earth bending and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I myself, I'd say I'm really excited. And Me too. Uh, yeah, um, I guess we, we didn't have as much to talk about this as we thought. So, uh, Jared, what are your final I mean, thoughts? I mean, yeah, but I do think it's pretty interesting how. The the a, a part I definitely enjoyed about this episode was the whole she has to keep this a secret from her parents the fact that she's basically a cage fighter, which yeah. <laughs> I expected someone to go bone saw is ready. I want to know if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it right. Bone saw is ready. Yeah, okay. I got you for three minutes. Three minutes of playtime. That's a so, cute outfit. Did your husband make it for you? By the way. You do know that Bonesaw was played by Randy Savage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you but, know that in preparation for his role as Bonesaw, Randy Savage actually wrestled for 20 years? Yeah, I know. Now, now that is some dedication to a role. Yeah. But, okay. But, uh, <laughs> what, and I also like how it comes to a head in the end of the episode where she lies to her, where she basically sneaks out. And lies to the group that, that, oh, no, he changed his mind. He let me go. No, he didn't. No, 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 no. <laughs> and I did enjoy the whole little uh, basic food fight that they had at the dinner table. That was great. Yeah. <sighs> and by then the way, also, mm -hmm. by the way, did you notice in the Swamp episode that pig was actually the Bay Fong symbol? So. Mm -hmm. And so, was it actually Toph that was, like, uh, in the swamp, or was it, legit, yes. just, like, a vision? Yes, and they literally used the fact that, like, the, the flying pig as a way to find the estate, because they said, oh, flying pig, oh, that's the Bayfong estate, they're the richest people in town. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's cool. So, I guess you could say Toph is more Batman than Sokka. Uh, Sokka. Oh, yeah. By the way, I want to share something. So, I was at Supercon... And I happen to have spotted this. I love your face when you put, like, because he, he showed me, like, a video of this the day before, and I said, you better get a picture of it. And I love your picture. It's like, I'm only doing this out of obligation. The reason why I, I, I took it here instead of on the actual creatures, because the line was ridiculously long, and I and that was the end of the day, so I'm like, I'm not going to wait in line any longer for this. Yeah, I don't blame you, but, like, so I just told Lad. I, 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 I just told Lad, let's pirate a photo. Come on, let's do this. Yeah, we did also, that. So, I love your cosplay. 
Ah, thank you. Yes. It's kind of a mixture of Young Justice and comics, uh, Connor Ken Superboy. Yeah, it works. It's like the easiest thing because I have the I have the jeans I had the gloves from like uh, Airsoft and that was like I all I need is a t shirt. That should be easy to get. <laughs> well, Jared, thank you for joining us and uh, we hope to see you uh, next week on uh, episode of Avatar Rewatch. As always, this has been Nick from the Phoenix Press. And remember, I can only show you the door. You're the ones who walk to it.